We are Southeastern 16. I'm Chase Robinson. That is Chris Lee as we're getting you ready for Florida, Miami week one. We're going to talk about what the Gators need to do uh, to beat Miami in this huge week one matchup. I mean, it's a it's a uh, what two and a half point favorite for Miami. When you look at some of the services, really a, a field goal type game here. It's in the swamp. It's a, a 230 central kick on ABC. So it'll be our, our first SEC on ABC uh, matchup that we have seen. So we'll dive into that in just a second. But let's talk about Bet Online, the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Yeah, from the preseason NFL to college football kicking off, Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Think you know your stuff? Get in on a winner take all $300,000 NFL survivor pool for the upcoming season. When the game's over, you can go to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker or one of the over 150 slots games. Head over to the website today, use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, and get in on the action. Bet online, the game starts here. All right, Chris, we're talking what the Gators must do to beat Miami week one. And here's something I think is where it kind of starts uh, for this game. And for the Gators, is they need to one, protect the football. But uh, they need to win the turnover battle. I mean, uh, we saw last year they lost, what, seven fumbles. Uh, Graham Mertz, I think, threw three interceptions. Um, but you want to you, you want to play clean football in a game like this. And I know it's the first game of the season. You're going to be working out some kinks. But I think winning the turnover battle for the Gators is really, really important in this game. You don't want to give Miami any more chances than, than they have already. Uh, by giving them uh, some free football. And so I think winning the turnover battle is crucial in this game for the Gators. Yeah, I do too. Neither team was great at it a year ago. I think Florida was minus five. I think Miami may be minus four. Florida's issue was not turning it over so much. It lost seven fumbles, and Graham Mertz threw just three interceptions, Chase. The issue was getting them back on the other end. I think Florida recovered like three fumbles and had three picks. So to me – it, and this this will lead into point number two in just a minute. But I think, you know, obviously you've got to continue to have the ball security you had a year ago. Um, you know, there's going to be some running back questions too we'll get to that may play into that a little bit. But I think Florida was pretty good last year about hanging on to the ball. It was just the forcing turnovers yeah. side of thing. And, and, and the defense that had a lot of issues last year. I think that's one to circle going into this one. Yeah, and and defensively, I think there's a couple of guys who um, maybe all SEC type players who I think can help create those turnovers for the Florida defense, and and they're going to need that. There, there's no doubt. Uh, like we said, they they protected the football well. No, they need to continue to do that this year, and again, not give Miami any opportunities. But creating those turnovers, I think, will be huge in a game like this to give Florida some momentum. And you got to imagine playing in the swamp. You you create some turnovers that gets the crowd really into it and will will give you some momentum. So yeah, the creating turnovers I think will be a, a a big part of this game for Florida. Well, Chase, best way to create turnovers is get a pass rush, and, and Florida just has not had a pass rush in a while. Uh, twenty three sacks two years ago, twenty two last year. Compare that to what Florida was a few years back. Twenty twenty one, thirty six sacks. The year before, thirty five. Mm. The year before that, forty nine sacks. I mean, this just has not been the Florida defense we're used to. And you got to find a pass rush somewhere. I don't know if that yep. is maybe Shamar James getting after it off the edge, maybe a, a, a pup Howard to transfer from South Carolina, you know, because up front last year, these guys weren't getting a ton of pressure. Yep. Um, you know, TJ Cersei, I think had like three and a half sacks, maybe, or excuse me, a half a sack, three and a half tackles for loss. So there's just, when you look at guys who got after the passer a year ago, there just weren't many of them. Now, Joey Slackman, the transfer from Penn, had four sacks. I think that's the most sacks that anybody on this roster had anywhere a year ago. Um, but you you got to find a pass rush to maybe generate some mistakes from Cam Ward. Now, Miami only gave up 15 sacks a year ago, so that's a problem, too. They were good at protecting the passer. But you know, Jason Marshall is a guy that we, we've talked about in this league for a long time, the corner at Florida. Probably going to be an NFL corner one day. Last year, 10 passes defended, no interceptions, I think. Uh, you know, So maybe it's a matter of when you get your hands on a ball, reel it in. 
and, and make something yeah. happen. But I feel like this Florida defense has not been great in the past at making things happen, and they've got to up their game in that this year, particularly against what I think is a really, really good Miami team. You know, that is an interesting note as I look up and down the roster, uh, the, the defensive roster here for Florida. Yeah, usually you'll see some higher numbers, but, you know, it's half a sack, one sack, you know, and and you mentioned Joey Slackman, the uh, former Penn player, had four sacks there in the Ivy League, but there's just, there there's not a ton of, of numbers next to the yeah. uh, sacks on this roster, and, and they've got to... They've, they've got to up that this year, and not just in this game. I know we're talking about this week one game against Miami, but moving forward, that's something that they've got to do if they want to be successful this year um, in the SEC. So, yeah, fighting that pass rush I think is going to be huge. And and then you flip over to the other side, Chris, um, and for Florida to win this game, they need to have a rushing attack uh, when it comes to running the football. Yeah, and I think that's one of the bigger questions going into this game. Montreal Johnson's health, there's not a lot out there on it. I guess Trey Webb behind him would be the the, the next guy. He averaged 6.3 yards per carry last year, but it was only on 26 carries. Um, I, I really don't know. My, my guess is we don't see Johnson, but it's just a guess. Yeah. Who knows? We're doing this, what, the Tuesday before the game? Uh, I, I don't know what that looks like, but Florida's got him out some kind of a running presence, Chase. And, you know, Miami gave up 3.3 yards a rush last year. Now, I bet if you take sacks out of it, it looks a little different. But still, yeah. it was a stingy rush defense. Graham Mertz is not really a runner. You know, maybe we see DJ Lagway in packages. I don't know. Yeah. Um, just, just something else. Because I think if, if, if Montreal Johnson is there, I think you feel okay about the running game. But, but what if he's not? And we just don't know as we're doing this, do we? We don't, and I, I, I'm i wondering if we'll, we'll see a little more creativity, maybe bringing a, a receiver in the backfield and, and letting them go and, and again, just being creative with, with how they call plays offensively if there is no Montreal Johnson. But you're right, if there is, then then I think he's going to take a lot of pressure off the, uh, the run game. Very talented running back is Johnson. So, yeah, I mean they've they've got to, and again, this is big for this week, but that's it's also big moving forward for the rest of the year. What kind of uh, run game are they going to establish early in the season, uh, and and how are they going to maintain that? But I think it'll be huge in this game is uh, is to have some balance on offense, and that starts with with your rushing attack and how they're able to do that. I think they're going to have to be creative uh, all season as far as running the ball, but especially against Miami, who again is pro- I think. I think people uh, don't realize that this is a really good Miami team that's coming into Florida. Uh, you look at Miami the last couple of years and seen the struggles that they've had, but uh, I think this is going to be a great game, and I think Miami defense is good, and again, Florida has got to create something on the ground, especially at the beginning of this game, I feel like. Hey, Chase, I'm looking for the exact quote from Billy Napier, and I found it. This is courtesy of Jacob Rudner at Swamp 24-7. This is the quote from Billy Napier, and I think this was the Monday media availability. And I'm sorry, this is August the 24th, so this is still a couple of days ago, but this was his quote. He's week to week, right? He's already on his feet. He's made significant progress, so it'll be one week at a time, and we're going to go at his pace, but we do anticipate it being a very minor issue. When we get him back is to be determined, but I think he's in a good place relative to maybe other situations than about been out there in the past. I don't know. That that sounds to me like he's not going to play, uh, but I don't know how yeah. we read Billy Napier speak, and so, again, that's a situation to monitor as we get it close is. to kickoff. And a big situation to monitor um, yeah. uh, going into this uh, week one matchup. Uh, but regardless, Chris, this would be a fun game Saturday afternoon. Again, uh, you look, it's like a two and a half point um, swing there in that game. So it should be fun. And again, the uh, first SEC on ABC game we will see as a 2.30 central kick for the Gators and the Hurricanes on ABC. So uh, we will have you covered with that game and, and the rest of the SEC all season long, including week one here on Southeastern 16. So subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends. And uh, hey, if you'd be interested in sponsoring our content here on Southeastern 16, you can uh, send an email to caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. And uh, you can 
let her know that uh, you you heard it here on the show and you want to sponsor our content. We would love to have those conversations with you. So again, Caroline.Smith at Southeastern. 14.com southeastern 16 we are your place for all things sec sports for chris lee i'm chase robinson southeastern 16 is presented to you by bet online